Hello everyone. After his baptism in the river Jordan, Jesus went into villages and towns throughout Palestine, teaching in synagogues and preaching the good news about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God was the central message of Jesus' teaching. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God really means God's rule and reign on earth. It means that God will one day usher in a kingdom of peace, righteousness, happiness and prosperity on earth, a place that will be as perfect as it is in heaven, just as we pray for it in the Our Father prayer. That is the goal of God for the whole universe. Jesus taught about God and about his kingdom both in plain speech and in parables. Parables are illustrations taken from circumstances and situations of everyday life. Jesus' parables came from farming, fishing, shepherding, household life and nature to convey a moral or spiritual lesson. These parables help people understand what Jesus was teaching. When his disciples failed to believe or understand what Jesus was talking about, he explained the parables to them in private. Friends, in Mark's Gospel, there are six parables that are related to the Kingdom of God. Today's Gospel reading consists of two parables about seeds. In the first parable, Jesus speaks about a farmer who sows seeds and which grow without his knowing and understanding. The farmer does not go and dig every day to see if the seed has germinated. All he does is work the ground, sow the seed, water it or wait for rain whichever helps the seed to sprout. When it starts to grow, the farmer removes the weeds plus puts manure around it. Thereafter, he again waits patiently for his seeds to produce fruit. When the grain ripens, he harvests his crops. Friends, no crop appears overnight. Neither does the farmer have control over the weather. He must have patience with the seeds and the crops, for it takes time for seed to germinate, sprout, grow and bear fruits. So a farmer sows the seeds and leaves it to nature to do its work. If he is a believer, then he asks God to bless the seed sown and wait for him to do so. Friends, it is a work of faith. The seed seemingly has the power to grow on its own. Jesus says that just as the seed grows mysteriously and miraculously, so too does the kingdom of God which he has planted on this earth through his incarnation, teaching, miracles, suffering and death grow quietly, almost imperceptibly and invisibly. Friends, although already present in Jesus and his group of twelve and in the church, the kingdom of God has yet to be fully established. Just as the seed in the parable needs time to grow, so does God's kingdom. Friends, in the second parable, Jesus speaks of a mustard seed. Mustard seeds, sized about 1 to 2 millimeters in diameter, are smaller than all other seeds. But when it is fully grown, it can be larger than many other plants, about 9 to 12 feet high and just as wide. Moreover, it can provide shelter and shade for birds. Friends, the mustard plants are quite common in the fields around the Sea of Galilee. Illustrating the spectacular growth of a mustard seed, how something very small can grow or expand into something very large, that birds can come and rest under its leaves, Jesus points out its similarity to the kingdom of God initiated by him that starts out very small but eventually would become an attractive, welcoming and comforting place for many people in the world. Friends, Jesus probably told these two parables in the context of a doubt in the minds of his disciples as to whether Jesus' ministry and mission to establish the reign of God in the world would succeed at all, against all odds, since Jewish authorities were outright against him, plus there was no dramatic and visible success from his work. Friends, 
What is the message for us? Today's world is very different from that in Jesus' time. Especially over the last hundred years, the world has changed tremendously. It has advanced so rapidly in science and technology. Until very recently, if you wanted to go somewhere and did not know the way, you asked for directions from another person. But now, no matter where you are going, Google Maps can suggest the best route for you or you can plan your route, pull up schedules, get step-by-step -step directions or ask Siri to guide you. And if you get lost, you can even ask Siri to lead you home. Friends, the world has also seen a great progress in economic development and material well-being across the globe. It has achieved a significant improvement in quality of life through tetering diseases and increasing life expectancy. It has also seen significant decreases in absolute poverty. However, friends, we are facing the same old problems over and over again. We continuously struggle with impatience, anxiety, despair and greed. We are all caught up in the world of immediate, no-weight, instant gratification reflective of the quick fix world. We crave for fast and instant results. We are caught up in our own lives, our own needs, our own ego gratification. We do not like it when the world around moves at a slow pace. Because of this, any delay in anything irritates us and drives us mad. We get discouraged by the small beginnings of any good work. Fewer people are listening to good advice and equally fewer Christians are seriously following Jesus' teaching, etc. Friends, when we do not see instant results of our good work and guidance, or when we face resistance or opposition to our good works, we are tempted to give it up altogether. We have tendencies to become impatient even over the slightest things and over-anxious when results do not turn out as we wish them so. Friends, in the midst of these realities, these two parables advocate hope, patience and faith instead of impatience, despair and discouragement. They speak of the small and insignificant beginnings of any work done for God and His mission, that is, for the Kingdom of God, with the certainty of His tremendous outcome and wonderful result in God's own time. For instance, when you are trying to mend fences with a person and he or she is stonewalling, the natural human reaction is to get mad and resentful. But you need patience to continue being kind and nice when you are getting little or no reinforcement. Friends, let us not forget that the Kingdom of God is a divine accomplishment and not human. But of course, nurtured with human efforts. We cannot make the kingdom grow by our own power, but by God's power alone. This grows naturally and gradually, instead of suddenly and dramatically. Just like a seed, it has power to sprout and grow when it is sown as per its nature. So, we must wait patiently for the seeds of faith and love to bear fruit. But friends, what does being patient mean? Patience does not mean doing nothing or tolerating bad situation quietly and calmly. Rather, it is about perseverance and endurance. It is about submission and surrender to Almighty God. That is, you move forward, stay on course until the promised blessings come, and be faithful to God even when things are not going your way. Just as we need to surrender to the natural order of things in growing crops, so to each of us need to do our part in building the Holy Kingdom and wait patiently for God to bring about the result. We need to trust in Jesus who gives us hope that just as the mustard seed becomes a large plant and gives shelter to the birds of the air, the kingdom which he started very small with a few fishermen will one day become very large to encompass all peoples and nations here on earth. Friends, the work of yielding fruit is done by God secretly, without our knowledge, while we sleep and rise up, as today's parable says, as we go about our normal duties. Friends, 
The kingdom of God is already in place and it is here and now in all those who believe in and follow Jesus. Through the centuries, the church has been instrumental in the extension of the kingdom worldwide and invites all believers to contribute to God's kingdom while on earth through the good deeds that we do during our life. That good consists of both kindness to others and in whatever way we use our God-given gifts and talents toward the building of God's kingdom. Furthermore, all those who love God and neighbors constitute the kingdom of God on earth. Friends, when St. Mother Teresa had begun to work for the poor in India in 1948, she wanted to build an orphanage. When she informed the superior at the convent that God had told her to build an orphanage, the mother superior asked Teresa how much money she had. When she replied, five rupees, the superior asked her what she expected to build with the five rupees. It is said that Teresa replied, I have five rupees and faith, and I can build anything with that. Friends, Teresa went on to rent a small hut for five rupees per month for the homeless and the dying. She started small, but today her work has spread around the world. Friends, Teresa's example is a shining beacon to us all. We all can live in ways that will continue to help advance God's kingdom by walking the simple path that Teresa has laid out for us. Today, I leave you with a few quotes from St. Teresa herself. She said, Be faithful in small things because it is in them that your strength lies. She said, We ourselves feel that what we are doing is just a drop in the ocean, but the ocean would be less because of that missing drop. She said, if you can't feed a hundred people, then feed just one. I alone cannot change the world, she said, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. She also said, do not wait for leaders, do it alone, person to person. And then she said, what can you do for world peace? Go home and love your family. Amen. God bless you.